Hi everyone, welcome back to the Romance Reader vlog. This is the second of uh, the, my second post here on, um, well in this medium at least, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I've recently gotten 2,000 views on the vlog, so yay. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying my um, my little rambles every once in a while, and um, I hope you keep enjoying them, and I hope you enjoy this new uh, medium as well. Uh, today I want to talk about a uh, series romance. I am currently rereading um, the last two books in the Bride Quartet by Nora Roberts. Um, I skipped the first book uh, because I don't really like um, the heroine in that book. Uh, she had a lot of self-esteem problems to me and she was kind of depressing. Um, I didn't mean to skip the second book. I forgot that there were four, and I thought there were only three, and somehow I forgot about number two, although I do really like it, but I'm not going to go back and read the second one after I finish the fourth, if I actually even finish it. Um, the fourth is kind of slow for me right now. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about what series, um, books don't work for me. Uh, although one of them actually did work when I first read them. Um, that first series is the Jazz Park series by Jennifer Reardon. Um, it was one of the few series I actually started with the first book, although not when the first book came out because I hadn't heard of it then. I actually heard of this series from uh, The Smart Bitches um, when the author committed suicide. Um, actually, she committed suicide before the last book even was published. I think she had finished writing it and had all her ducks in the row for publishing when she went and committed suicide and she was actually fairly young um and if you go and read through the series you can under not understand but you can see that she was kind of getting depressed towards the end because the books get a bit depressing and um I really think that's probably why I can't even finish the series I read the first seven books and um received the eighth the about the day it came out I think I pre-ordered it and um, I just couldn't bring myself to read it. I still haven't. I think the book series came out about four years ago now, in 2010, and um, I just couldn't get into it. Again, I did try to reread the first book with the intention of reading all the way through the series over the summer. And I got, I think, maybe 60% of the book, 60% finished with the book on my Kindle. And I said, you know what, I can't, I can't go back to this. It's not what I remember it being. It's not as much fun. Um, I do remember that that first book was a bit harder to read for me than the second. In the second book, I was like, maybe I'll read that one now. But I went on to something else. I don't remember what I went right into. Um, and I do believe that the reason I have trouble with that series is because it does get depressing towards, like, the fourth or fifth book. Um, there's a demon going after Jazz's soul. And um, Val, 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 however you say his name, he um, he's, he ends up having problems because of his ex-wife, um, I believe she had turned him into a vampire, or he had turned her into one, and it, it was a crazy vampire soap opera type of thing going on there, and he was looking for his sons, who I guess they were vampires first, I don't remember, it's been a very long time. Um, another reason I think that series really didn't work for me is also that it's first person, and when the character you're reading about is depressing, being inside their head is really depressing, and I don't want to be in that space. Um, another series for me that really didn't work was the uh, Sookie St Stackhouse novels um, by Charlene Harris. Uh, if you don't know, these are the books that um, True Blood on HBO is based off of. And that's why I actually started reading them, um, actually started reading the first book. Um, because I was really into True Blood when it first came out. Not anymore, I used to be. Um, I guess that's kind of the way things go nowadays. Um, I kind of stopped being into vampires. I can... There are a few that I can still read. Um, the last book in, I think it was, the I think the series was the Circle series by Nora Roberts, where it was a um, group of six people, uh, all with different uh, abilities. It was a witch, a vampire, a sorcerer, a wizard, or whatever he was called, um, a shapeshifter, and a demon hunter. And I think I'm leaving someone out, and I can't remember... Um, oh, and, um, the last book was about 
uh, Kian, and he was, or Kane, as he was going at the beginning of the series. But he ends up going back to his uh, Celtic name um, towards the end. And he was a bit angsty, but he wasn't one of those, oh, dear Lord, shoot me now, vampire angst books. And I was able to read that one. Um, and, of course, I could sit and watch Buffy till the day I die because it's Buffy, you, you know. Um, I, I can be, I can probably recite lines from that series, too, if I really put my mind to it. Sorry, I got a piece of hair in my mouth. Um, but Sookie Stackhouse, I don't know what the problem was I had with it. It may have just been the first person point of view, because like I said, I really don't like that. I don't like listening to, well, not listening. I don't like reading, um, books where the person is all in their head and you, you I think it comes from um, coll from college when I was reading uh, The Catcher in the Rye, and we talked a lot about how Holden Caulfield is this unreliable narrator because you just don't know what's going on inside his head. And I swear, he is completely bipolar. There, That is what's wrong with that kid. <laughs> and I, was, I hated that book. I really hated that book. Um, now that I've gotten through some books that there's some series I don't like I want to talk about a few that I really do um most of these actually are also uh first person but they're also not straight romance they're more mystery I guess uh the first one I want to talk about is the Ivy League series by Diana Peterfund I think that's how you pronounce her name um and they follow a uh, junior at not Yale um who is looking to get into a secret society on her campus for her senior year, because that's what apparently you do. And um, she gets an invitation to join a society, and she thinks it's one. It ends up being this other really prestigious society where um, it, for centuries it had just been male-oriented, and then it's been open up to women. Uh, and hers is the first class that does it. And um, she, I've actually blogged about this. A series before I reviewed the final two books in the series because I, those were my favorites. Um, the series order is Secret Society Girl, and then it is Under the Rose, then The Rites of Spring Break, and Tapping Gown. The series actually ended in 2009, I think, but I only found out about it um, probably about March or April of last year, and it took a while for it to actually come into my library for me to read it. Um, there is a romance in it, but the romance really only picks up in the third book. Um, although it is kind of hinted at in the second, really. Um, but like I said, I really enjoyed that series. And then there is the Heather Wells series by Meg Cabot, who wrote the Princess Diaries books, um, back before it was a movie. And there were a whole lot more than just the Princess Diaries. There were a ton of them, although I never read them. I wasn't really into YA when I was a teenager. I'm still not, unless you're talking Harry Potter. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Heather Wells novels follows a former pop princess um, who is kind of in the veins of a Mandy Moore or a Jessica Simpson, but nowhere close to a Brittany or a Christina. Um, and their mysteries, their I guess they're kind of cozy mysteries, but not really. Um, they always involve her finding a dead body or something weird going on uh, at the school where she works, which is not NYU, but obviously NYU. <laughs> um, the romance it comes in um, pretty much from day one, although she has feelings for this guy and he seems to be oblivious. And then I think it's either the end of the second book or the beginning of the third where she and the guy finally get together. Um, I think so far there have been four books. Uh, the first one is Size 12 is Not Fat, and the most recent is The Bride War Size 12, although there was some weird um, cover issue where the title was um, something about... Oh, the, the no, something about... Um, 12 is the New Black. That's what it was. The, the title on the cover was uh, 12 is the New Black. And I'm kind of glad they didn't go with that. I don't really like that title. I do like The Bride War Size 12 a lot better. Um, that book was fun, although um, I did prefer the one previously in the series. 
Um, the next one is the Lucy Valentine series by Heather Weber, which, uh, if you're a fan of General Hospital like I am, um, I got a kick out of the name. Um, for those of you who don't know the show, there's been a character on, she's been off and on since, I guess, the 70s, um, named Heather Weber, and she's a bit of a psychotic lunatic, um, famous for selling her son and drugging his adopted family, adopted mother with LSD laced iced tea. Um, and she's actually back on the show now. Uh, she's got another son now who she also sold. Um, and although she never, I don't think she ever drugged anyone involving him with LSD. She did, uh, last year, I think, or the year before, drug her other son's girlfriend with, um, again, LSD laced iced tea and, um, gave her psychic visions somehow. I don't know how that works. <laughs> um, but the book series has nothing to do with General Hospital. It's just that, uh, the author has an unfortunate name or a fortunate one for, you know, people like me who saw it and had said, oh, you know what, I have to read something written by a Heather Weber. Um, so the Lucy Valentine series follows uh, Lucy Valentine, who um, is the latest in a long line of people who were given the ability to see auras by Cupid. And they use this ability to um, kind of match people. It's like, I guess it's kind of like a Match.com deal, although the people have to come into the office to speak to them for their auras to be seen. Um, the thing with Lucy is that she lost the ability to do that. And she was given a different one. She now can find things. So it helps. She actually ends up being able to help find people that way. But it also, um, she also ends up being involved with a lot of mysteries. And that's where the romance comes in. She gets involved with the brother of the PI who works for the company. But he's also a PI in training. Um, and their relationship is, is it's kind of fun and it's very light. Um, now these last two, um, books I just talked about, the Heather Wells, uh, novel and Lu novels and the Lucy Valentine novels, um, and the Ivy League, they're also, um, they're all first person point of view, so they may not work for everybody. Um, and the last one I want to talk about is a, um, romantic suspense series by Karen Rose, I don't know quite how many books there are right now. There are a lot, though. Um, and they're all kind of interconnected, but not really. Um, they're, they take place in various different cities, but they're all, um, like I said, romantic suspense. So they're all different um, cases. They involve cops and firemen and um, the military. I'm looking forward to the next book. Um, forget what it's called, but it involves two characters who have been um, integral in the last two books, although, um, the hero was in, um, I think the second book in the series, um, or was, yeah, the second book in the series, I don't remember what that one was called, but it was actually, um, an interesting book too. Uh, the thing with these, um, novels is that they are thrillers as well. Um, there is a, there are always killers on the loose in these books, there, and the people are always in danger. So if you don't like those type of books, you need to stay away from them because they will scare you. Um, there was one book in the series that I didn't really like. Um, I think it's uh, You Belong to Me. Um, and it, it there are just things in that book that kind of pushed it into kind of torture porn in a way. Um, there was angry sex against a brick, brick wall outside of a club where there was a murder or isn't going to be a murder. I don't remember exactly. It's been a while since I read it, and there, there's a reason for that, obviously. Um, the other books in the series, they do get that uh, criticism every once in a while, but not always. Um, oh, and last, I do want to talk about another series that I got into. It is the Pink Carnation series by Lauren Willig, which um, each book has to do with um, trying to beat Napoleon, it, they take place in early um, 19th century, so I believe the first book was 1803. But they do also go back and forth with um, the kind of present, but not really, because they, they take place, I think, in 2004. Um, so it's about 10 years ago now. Um, but 
they start with um, The Secret History of the Pincarnation, which is Richard and, Richard and Amy's book. And um, the most recent one was The Passion of the Purple Plumeria. <laughs> it's getting harder and harder for her to find good flowers, I guess. Um, there's another one coming out, um, I believe, in August of this year. Um, but what I like about these is that they're not just um, historical. They're also so semi-contemporary. Um, so, and I also like the fact that there are a lot of spies. I'm a big spy nerd. <laughs> um, and the coolest thing is that they're female spies. A lot of them involve the women being the spies and not just the men. So, um, that'll be it for this, um, vlog. I want to remind you that you can follow, um, you could subscribe to the blog at the romancereader.wordpress.com. There's a little follow button. You can follow if you're on WordPress, or um, you can follow by um, signing up with your email. Uh, you can also, I've recently created a Facebook page for um, the blog, so it's facebook.com slash the romance reader. There is a nice little button off to the side where you can go and uh, click that and it'll let you like it. And last, you can follow me personally on uh, Twitter at scifigirl1986. Uh, so I hope you have enjoyed um, this vlog, and I hope you enjoy the blog in general. Um, happy reading.